I've got a bit of a problem. I'm building a subwoofer box for this awesome shallow subwoofer from Prodigy. It's going to be a complicated box with a bunch of curves and now I've got to figure out a way to cut all these wild shapes and cut all the parts. The good news, I've got a CNC machine and that's the best way to cut any kind of a curve. The bad news, I have to lay out the design in the CNC software in order to cut it on the CNC machine. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a box with a bunch of complicated components. That process begins in the CNC software. We're going Going to create a vector specifically a rectangle so we just click and drag then we can enter the width and the height of the rectangle it's going to be pretty big because the box itself is large it's just going to be shallow we can move it into position just kind of roughly we'll zoom in later and get the precise location in just a bit i'm going to click on that rectangle and go over to the parameters and then the corners, I'm going to choose a fillet corner, which is a round corner. And I'm going to choose a three inch radius for those corners. I only need to round off three of the four corners. So now I've got to go back and turn that corner into a right angle. To do that, I'm going to create another vector, a simple rectangle, and I'm going to make it three by three. And I'm going to move it where it lines up with the other vector, the curved vector. So I've got this rectangle overlapping my curved corner. I'm going to drag with the mouse, highlight both those. And then over here is one of the best tricks for designing things in a CNC project. It's a thing called Booleans. And I honestly have no idea how these Booleans work. What I always do is just click on them until I find the one that I want. So I clicked on the first one and it turns out the very first one I picked is the one that I needed. That was just luck. How do I know it's what I needed? The blue outline shows the shape after I do the Boolean union. In this case, it's a Weld. Zooming out, you can see I have exactly what I need. I've got a 90 degree angle down in this corner here, and then I've got rounded off curves everywhere else. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that piece, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I've made an extra one that I'm going to use later, just going to move it out of the way for now. In order to make it easier to assemble the enclosure later, I like to run a rabbit around the outer edge, and then a dado where the port's going to be. So to do that, we head into the software and we click on our piece we just made. Over over here under transform, we have the option to create offset vectors. You want to hit that and you want to set the offset to 0.75 and then hit apply. Now we have this additional vector that's an inch and a half shorter and an inch and a half narrower. And that's going to form the basis for our rabbit. The data is going to be a little bit more difficult to create. I'm going to start by making a vector that is 0.75 wide and 13.75 tall. The port's going to be four inches wide, so I'm going to go over four inches. The plan for the enclosure is to use some stack fab corners, and this right here is what those corners are going to look like inside the CNC software. Drawing up these corners is time consuming. If you want to save a little bit of time, I've actually got some templates of these corners that you can download and put into your own CNC software. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and move it right here where it joins with the piece we just made and joins with the outer rabbit pieces here. And one thing that I have learned over time is that sometimes MDF is just a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go here and take this piece that's 0.75 wide. I'm going to make it 0.77. So just a hair wider. That's going to make life a lot easier when you go to actually assemble the enclosure. And it's going to make it easier here in a second when I use Booleans to join everything together. To make these Booleans work, you want a little bit of overlap like you see here. So here we go. Let's do that overlap. Highlight both pieces, go over to our Booleans and weld them together. And we have our inner dado finished and ready to go. All that's left is to move it into its final position and we're all set. Let's take a look over in this other corner here where I've got another one I've already positioned. And this is very important. You need to go ahead and add them in because our outer rabbit is going to need to cover those wings as well. So we're going to grab everything except for our two holes for our dowel pins. And we're once again going to do the Boolean magic with those. Okay, that one's all set. Now it's time to repeat on the other three corners. I'm going to do that off camera. I've zoomed into the lower left corner because something really important is going on right here. This is going to be our port. I don't want this outer rabbit on the port opening. I a nice smooth port entrance. So I've drawn a vector here, just a simple rectangle, and I'm going to move it into position. I'm going to highlight the rectangle and that outer square vector that I created earlier, and then go to our, our best friend, the Boolean, and just start selecting Booleans until we get what we want, which is this one right here, and we'll hit OK. All right, we're not done yet. We're going to highlight this vector here and this vector here, and we're going to do it again. Just roll through the Booleans until you get what you want. 
right there. That's what we want. Let me zoom out and I'll show you what I've done. So we have a gap here where our port is going to be and then a nice rabbit to go around the entire enclosure. Highlight those two vectors and back to our best friend, the Boolean, and try out the different Booleans till we get what we need right there. That's gonna do the job, awesome. Now I'm gonna highlight that vector and I'm going to type L for layer and I'm going to create a new layer. This is gonna be titled Dado. We will hit OK and then add selection to layer. Now there's this piece here that I had earlier that I moved out of the way. I'm gonna take it and move it into position, select it, type L for layer, and add a new layer. This is going to be an outer cutout. I do this now to make it easier to do my toolpaths later. Now back to layers, and I'm going to hide the layers that I just made and hit OK. And I'm left with these eight holes right here. I'm going to highlight all of those. And again, L for layer, and I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it drill and hit OK and move the selection to the layer. This right here is the bottom of our subwoofer box, except for one important piece. Let me show you that right now. That important piece is the speaker cutout. So we will create a vector, this time a circle. We just draw the circle and then we can type in our radius. The plan here is to recess the driver up into the enclosure. So this circle needs to be the same size or slightly bigger than the outside diameter of our subwoofer and that's going to be about 12 and a half inches so i'm going to type 6.25 and hit enter and now what you'll notice is the circle is just kind of there and it's kind of maybe in the wrong place. I don't know, maybe that's where you want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight that circle and then I'm gonna hit shift and highlight my outer cutout right here. I'm gonna go over here to align vectors, hit that and I'm gonna center that speaker. So now the speaker is in the exact dead center of the bottom of my subwoofer enclosure. Let's click on the circle, then type L for layer, and we're going to do a new layer, the inner cutout. And of course, we want to move that to the layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make four more little circles, and these are going to be quarter inch circles, or a 0.125 inch radius. We're going to move those circles just a hair off of about an inch away from our speaker cutout. And I'm going to do three more of those around the speaker cutout. Those four holes are going to be for some quarter inch dowels. I'm going to highlight them all, type L for layer, and we're going to move these to our drill layer. Now what I need to do is make a piece of wood that goes inside the enclosure to actually mount the driver to. And for that, I'm going to create a rectangular vector. I'm going to make it about 15 by 15. I'm going to add that to my outer cutout. Next, make a speaker hole inside of that recessed baffle. I need a radius of 5.3125 inches from both and go back to the aligned vectors. And now it's going to be sitting right in the center. We're going to go ahead and add that to our inner cutout. Next, I'm going to hide that inner cutout. I'm going to click and drag and highlight my four for dowel pin locations, control C to copy, control V to paste, and now I'm going to position these around our speaker cutout. It took a few seconds to go in and make sure they were lined up where we needed, and we're going to move that selection to the layer. And so now we've got like a big part of the puzzle, our bottom of our enclosure, and then the recess. The next step is to take our stack fab corners and position them all someplace here. The goal here is to position them in such a way that we can get the most out of our piece of material. And that takes a little bit of time to just explore and find the best place to put them. But before we actually do any cutting or move on to the next step, we gotta do something really important and that is adding tabs. So we're gonna highlight all the relevant vectors and we're gonna go over here to edit and we're gonna edit tabs. And now we just go in and add our tabs. These keep your wood from flying off the CNC machine or getting picked up inside the CNC machine and getting jammed. I find that one tab per side on a small piece works great. Two tabs per side on large pieces work great as well. For our stack fab corners, two tabs for pieces plenty. They're not very big, not apt to go anywhere. Okay, done with the tabs. We need to make sure all of our stack fab corner pieces are going to be on the outer cutout layer. And we need to make sure all of our dowel holes are gonna be on the drill layer. So that's gonna be all the CNC work we need for the bottom of the enclosure and the stack fab corners. The top of the enclosure is more of the same, but a little bit different. We can think of the bottom as we're looking down on it, cutting it from the top. Well, we can't do that with the top. We gotta to flip the top over and we have to visualize looking up and cutting from the bottom. I've got all the parts right here from the bottom on a new file. And what I'm just gonna do is grab everything over here and transform. I'm gonna hit mirror horizontal. And now this 
base piece looks reversed. When you flip it over, it'll be in the right position. You may have noticed that I'm using this really cool screen capture software to make this video. As you can imagine, software like this isn't exactly cheap. I'm only able to afford these kinds of advanced tools because of the support of my patrons over on Patreon. My $10 and up patrons are all scrolling across the screen right now. And $25 and up patrons like Jonathan, Joe, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo, I'll get a great big shout out in the video. If you like what I'm doing, the best way to support this channel is to head over to Patreon today and sign up. If you'll go ahead and pay for an entire year up front, you'll get a huge discount. The next step is to create toolpaths, and that's where our layers come in really handy. So over here in our menu, we hit toolpaths, and we're going to start off with a contour toolpath, and we're going to select by layer we're going to select all of our outer cutouts. We're going to be using a quarter inch upcut end mill. I'll be sure to give you a link to the end mill down in the video description. We want it to go 0.125 per pass. We're going to plunge at 10 inches per minute and we're going to run it at 100 inches per minute speed. I can adjust the RPM through software because I bought the upgraded VFD spindle for my machine. We hit OK but we're not done yet. We're going to go over here and use stock bottom because we want to cut all the way through the material and we're going to cut on the outside right. We want to rename that to outer cutouts. That's going to be a long cut. It's going to take 36 minutes because there's a lot of details to cut out with all of the stack fab corners. We're going to hit show simulation and a simulation is going to run and show us exactly how these cuts are all going to play out. It's really important that you run the simulation so you can roll in and inspect everything to make sure all your cuts end up lined up exactly how you want them. This looks good to me. We're going to do another toolpath, but this time we're going to do a pocket toolpath and we're going to select by layer and now we're going to pick our dado layer and hit OK. We're going to use the same bit. The idea is to cut everything with one bit without making any bit changes and right here this is important for our pocket paths. It has a step over. So we'll make a quarter inch wide cut, which is the width of the bit. And then for the next pass, it's going to move over an eighth of an inch. Because we're not taking out as much material with every single pass, I like to speed it up. So I'm going to bump that feed rate up to 125. I'm going to hit OK, and that is good to go. I want the depth to be 0.25 inches. I want a quarter of an inch dado and rabbit around my entire enclosure. We're going to rename that dado. I want to move my dado cut up so it's the very first cut that we make. Now I'm going to do a another contour tool path and this time I want to make my speaker cut out so I'm going to choose enter cut out and hit OK. Again we're going to use the same bit. We're going to use the same depth per pass. We're going to go with the same 100 inch per minute speed. We want to use stock bottom because we're going to cut all the way through our material and this time our offset direction we're going to choose inside left and we will call it enter cutouts. Now I'm going to hit L for layer and I'm going to get rid of all of my layers except for the drill layer. We're going to come here to the drill feature and we're going to select by layer and choose the drill layer and hit OK. And that's going to give us 52 vectors. That's a lot of vectors. Now the drill settings are a little bit different. We're going to change that plunge rate to 10. We're going to keep the feed rate the same. It's not really relevant in this case. And we're going to slow the RPM down. When drilling, you want to slow things down so you don't burn the material. You'll know when you burn the material, you can smell it. We'll hit OK. Starting depth 0 inches, max depth, we're going to be using the stock bottom. Now we have different options for drill depth. We can do full depth peck and peck with full retract. What pecking does is it drops the bit down into the material, cuts, and then brings it back up and allows the material to clear out of the hole, which is the best way to do it. So we're going to do a peck method and we're going to do a distance of 0.125 with each peck. We're going to call this thing our drill tool path and hit OK. It's only going to take six minutes to do all that drilling. That seems really fast. I'm going to move my drill tool path to the very top. So the first thing the machine's going to do is go through and do all the drilling and then it's going to cut out the dado and then it's going to make my outer cutouts and my inner cutouts. Let's look at the simulation. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Everything seems lined up upright. I've done my best to minimize waste. Now all that's left is to set up the machine and start cutting. I'm going to put that video right here when it's done.